Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about the rotator cuff muscles. These muscles, along with the glenohumeral joint, provide wide range of movement without affecting the stability of the joint. We can remember the muscles by remembering the word sits. S for suprascapularis, I for infraspinatus, T for teres minor, and S for supraspinatus. The shoulder joint is a ball and socket shape, just like the hip. The suprascapularis muscle provides the internal rotation of the shoulder. The supraspinatus provides the abduction of the arm. But it's a very small muscle, so it can only abduct up to 15 degrees. The rest is carried out by the deltoid muscle. The infraspinatus provides the lateral rotation of the shoulder and the teres minor also provides the lateral rotation of the shoulder. These muscles are supplied by three main arteries, the suprascapular artery, the subscapular artery, and the posterior circumflex humeral artery. And all of these muscles drain lymphatically into the axillary lymph nodes. The important nerves that we have include the subscapular nerve, which supplies the subscapular muscle, and this nerve originates from the posterior cord branch of the brachial plexus. The root origin is C5, C6, and C7. The suprascapular nerve innervates both the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus muscles, and it originates from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. The roots are the C5 and C6. And finally, the axillary nerve innervates the teres minor. It originates from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. And the origin or the root is C5 and C6. Each muscle has a clinical significance. We can do the empty can test to test for the supraspinatus muscle. And we can evaluate the infraspinatus muscle by performing lateral rotation against resistance. The teres minor can be tested using the horns blowers test or by performing lateral rotation against resistance. And finally, the subscapularis can be tested using the lift off or bear hug test. 